It's Monday, and you know what that means. Jersey First TV probably brings to you the latest edition of Real Talk. And certainly, ladies and gentlemen, I am New Jersey's premier award-winning journalist, Top 50 Latino, as voted on by the Latino Spirit Online Magazine, along with the United States Latino Affairs Initiative in 2020, 2021, and 2022. Folks, maybe a nomination in 2023 is coming around the corner as well. And folks, always remember, I'll continue to be the weapon of mass disruption in Garden State Media because my level of honesty, now more than ever, is truly necessary in this era of journalistic deception. That's right, folks. It's me, Fernando Uribe. Happy Monday. We'll be wrapping up March soon again, folks. And, you know, it's nice to see the sun out past 7 o'clock, some warm days ahead of us, obviously. You know, March Madness right around the corner for all of us that love college hoops, you know, for both men and women. Hopefully you get to enjoy some of that and fill out your brackets, as they say, later on this weekend. Of course, Easter's right around the corner. I'm always excited for that, a little time off. But, of course, folks, here on this show, hey, I'm never taking time off. And that's right. That's why we will continue to be the absolute best show every week in Garden State Media, folks. The traffic doesn't lie, and neither do I. Again, I want to thank you all for tuning in from wherever and however you may be doing so right now on Facebook Live via StreamYard. Of course, Join us on YouTube as well, along with Twitch, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and all of the other social media platforms. Folks, I cannot say enough how happy I am for all the engagement online, of course. Thank you for everyone that certainly follows us. Make sure you like Real Talk with Fernando Uribe and Jersey First TV on Facebook, of course. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter. And for all of you YouTube subscribers, again, click the subscribe button. And you'll be automatically notified of all the wonderful content brought to you every single week by Jersey First TV. And of course, whether you get your podcast on Spotify or SoundCloud, download Jersey First and take it with you. Hey, as the days are getting warmer, maybe you're going for that early or late evening run, going to the gym, walking your dog, doing grocery shopping, whatever it is you're doing, folks, you're on your smartphone. So guess what? Take Jersey First TV with you at all times. And I cannot say enough how proud I am to be on the dream team of Garden State Media, folks. That's right. It's always Jersey First TV. Brand new episodes of the Nader Narrative premiere every Thursday, hosted by the incredible Elizabeth Nader. And brand new episodes of Bridging the Gap, hosted by AJ Melillo and Steven Rumbolo, my two favorite law students. Again, premiere every Thursday and, of course, every Monday night, whether it's 6.05 or 7.05 Eastern Time. Folks, you can tune in to the latest edition of Real Talk right here with Jersey First TV. Folks, you want to stick around? We have a jam-packed show, a lot to cover during the program. Certainly, folks, I'm going to have a lot to say about some of the clowns in New Jersey media. You know, when we talk about clowns, of course, we're talking about Matt Freeman with Political New Jersey. And of course, also, folks, speaking of clowns, we'll have a lot to say as well, not just in journalism, but of course, also in New Jersey politics. And folks, I cannot say enough, of course, you know, when we talk about clowns in New Jersey politics, that's right, gentlemen. We're always talking about Hoboken Mayor Robinder Bala. I have a lot to say about these two and much more later on during final thoughts. But folks, let's get serious for a minute here. And uh, Certainly, for those of you that know, obviously, how dedicated I am to philanthropy, I'm not just I'm not just only your favorite journalist, favorite educator, favorite conservative, but I'm also your favorite philanthropist, folks. And the reason I take it so seriously is because, hey, I know I'm making a difference. And for years, you know, on this program, I volunteered for the American Cancer Society and various charities. But this year, now more than ever, I'm so privileged to be volunteering and working with Alzheimer's New Jersey. And of course, as you can see there, that's their flyer. Coming up on Saturday morning, May the 18th, that's right, at Liberty State Park, will be the Walk to Fight Alzheimer's. Again, folks, you can check out all the information there. Scan the QR code right behind me, obviously, whether you're watching live or later on during the replay. Certainly register and donate today. I have a lot to say about Alzheimer's New Jersey and the Great Walk. Listen, it's the day after my birthday on May the 17th. I'm going to do my best to be there. Uh, I, you know, listen, I love to party on my birthday, but guess what? It's an even more important cause to party with the great people at Alzheimer's New Jersey. We'll be doing that once again on Saturday morning, May the 18th at Liberty State Park. Again, registration begins at 9, and so the walk begins at 1030. Folks, again, scan that QR code behind me. Register today. Get a team together and donate. Again, all proceeds benefit Alzheimer's New Jersey, a worthwhile organization. Again, you can check them out at www.alznj.org. Oregon. Folks, speaking of Alzheimer's New Jersey, it's my privilege tonight. Again, you know, I'm always talking politics on this show, and why not take a break 
from sort of the toxicity of New Jersey politics and even national politics, but and talk about issues that are really important in our community. And one of them for me, folks, is raising awareness about Alzheimer's disease and also dementia, which is ravaging our country each and every day and ravaging someone you know, probably, whether it's in your family, friends, neighbors, colleagues. Hey, it's affecting us all. Let's make a difference here. And again, walk to end Alzheimer's. Certainly, folks, I'll continue to give you more information about my upcoming event on Friday night, April the 26th. Memories matter, once again, to benefit Alzheimer's New Jersey. But tonight, let's learn more about Alzheimer's and dementia, folks. Here exclusively with me, he is the distinguished president and CEO of Alzheimer's New Jersey. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, he is the very good and distinguished, and again, uh, apparently a guy who is a fan of the show, Mr. Kenneth Zaints, joins us here on Real Talk. Kenneth, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Thanks so much for, for having us, uh, for having me this evening, and I, I look forward to our conversation. Absolutely. And folks, again, uh, if you haven't had a chance, check out www.alznj.org. If you're looking to register, donate, or volunteer with one of the most worthwhile organizations in the state of New Jersey, folks, it's Alzheimer's New Jersey for sure. Uh, Kenneth, great, good to see you here, man. And, um, you know, we've talked off the air a lot, obviously. Uh, I'm so um, really I'm privileged to be volunteering and working with you guys and girls, all the good people over there at Alzheimer's New Jersey for my event coming up uh, later on next month. But a lot to sort of learn about Alzheimer's and dementia. And I think maybe the big question to start out with, man, it, it was what drew you to working with this amazing organization? Well, honestly, the truth is it was it was you know back a long time ago, over over 26 years ago, it was one of those ads in the newspaper, which we don't have anymore. But that's actually what drew me to the organization. Um, and you know, the excitement about being able to 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 help an organization grow and be involved with a disease that is really so devastating for families in New Jersey and to be able to be on the forefront of helping to make a difference for those families. I mean, that's what drew me and that's what's kept me here all this time. Kenneth, when we, I mean, again, I don't have the data in front of me. I'm sure you come through it often throughout the year when you're giving speeches, being on panels, certainly everything, all the great stuff you do. And again, shout out to Elaine Winter, by the way. That's my girl over there. And I, I, I love <laughs> Elaine. And uh, I can't say enough about how happy I was to sort of connect with her uh, some months ago when I, uh, you know, when I notified Alzheimer's New Jersey, I, I was hosting this event coming up next month uh, on Friday night, April the 26th. So we'll talk a little bit more about that later, Kenneth. But uh, uh, certainly, you know, great stuff that you're all doing. But I mean, what is the data telling us presently about the spread of Alzheimer's and dementia? And again, I, mean, I, I look at it every so often and I can just say for me within the Hispanic and Latino community, it is ravaging us. I don't know if it's it's something genetic, it's our diet, what we're predisposed to. Brother, let's separate fact from friction here. Well, first, overall, the disease impacts about, about 10% of people in the U.S. over the age of 65. So with an aging population in New Jersey, um, you just apply those statistics and you see how devastating the, de the disease is and how many people are impacted. There are about 190,000 people in New Jersey who have Alzheimer's disease. And if you add their caregivers, because family caregivers are impacted as well, we're probably talking about you know well over 600,000 people in our state that are impacted by the disease. And then you mentioned, of course, the Hispanic Latino population. We know that Hispanics and Latinos seem to be impacted when they are over the age of 65 about one and a half times more than white americans who were in that same age category it's interesting because we're you know i i know so many people kenneth that uh family members have been affected by it and to a very you know to a, to a large extent right it's not just a person that's exhibiting symptoms but also it's it, it's so debilitating emotionally draining, mentally draining uh, for family members and friends that have to see their loved ones undergoing such a crippling disease that presently there is no cure for. I mean, I know obviously we see different diseases throughout the decades and we're seeing strides in it. Uh, we're seeing some progress in medicine and science, but from everything I'm reading though, Kenneth, I, I don't see any I don't see any light at the end of the tunnel. I mean, I'm, I'm usually the guy that's always the, the glass is half full 
Uh, but, but what can you share with us tonight about any developments or recent trials that, that maybe give us some some inkling of maybe, you know, optimism? Well, I think, you know, for years, as far as medications are concerned, the best that we could do were medications that helped on um, the symptoms of the disease. But about a year ago, there were there have been medications approved that are disease modifying medications. Um, and those medications um, are really target the plaque in the brain. And they've been shown to clear that plaque um, out of the brain. And there has been some improvement in terms of the data that's been released in cognition in those people who have been on um, the, these disease modifying, uh, this disease modifying drug. So that is huge progress and very exciting progress, but it's, of course, as you said, it's very slow progress. So I think there is optimism that one day there will be a cure for this disease, but even more so that we can maybe slow down the progression and slowing down the progression of the disease can also have a huge impact on those with the disease and of course on, the, on their family caregivers in terms of giving more quality of life, especially when we're talking about a disease that generally impacts people over the age of 65. Can, folks, by the way, if you're just joining us right now, it's 612 here on the East Coast. If you're joining us live here on Real Talk via Jersey First TV, whether it's on YouTube, Facebook Live, obviously all of our social media platforms. My guest tonight is a distinguished president and CEO of Alzheimer's in New Jersey, Mr. Kenneth Zaints, here on the show tonight. Folks, check it out, www.alznj.org for more information concerning Alzheimer's in New Jersey. Kenneth, you know, listen, uh, we're both very educated men. We try to read up, uh, obviously, on, on things that matter to us. And we're seeing that, you know, whether it's funding or grants, you know, nonprofit work is difficult. It's certainly not like working in the private sector or public sector. There's Certainly, you know, a specific amount of money that's allocated for personnel, payroll, things of that nature. But when you're when you're working in the nonprofit sector, uh, again, and over the years, I've been so involved in philanthropy. I've talked to different people from different organizations. And we talked off the air. Obviously, I'm very dedicated to the American Cancer Society with during October for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Obviously, I've worked with the March of Dimes, the Wounded Warrior Project, Hope for the Warriors, and, and certainly other organizations. I just look at, you know people like yourself, Elaine Winter and others that, I mean, you've made this your life's work. You're making this like your mission in life. And I can't imagine, I, I'm exhausted just reading through data sometimes. <laughs> I'm exhausted just organizing, you know, philanthropic events, which I've been, you know, again, I'm not trying to be too braggadocious here, but I, I've become very good at it. I, I've been able to, you know, organize events. I'm very proud of it. Uh, it's exhausting. I'm not going to lie to you. I wake up the next morning after the event. I'm like, I'm totally just burnt out. But I realize that when you're making a difference, it's so worthwhile. So I just, I just know I can sleep it off. But that's just me organizing one event a year. For you, this is every single day. How do you do it, man? Well, I think you know it, it's easy when you're motivated by yeah. by being a catalyst for people in the community to do good. I mean, that's really what it's all about. So, you know, we we are only as successful as our donors and our volunteers. And, you know, being in a career that allows you to work with people who wanna do good work and be able to channel that good work for them into a cause like ours that helps make a difference in the community, that's really what it's all about. So. You know, like any, it look, at the end of the day, I mean, sometimes you think, well, it's a job and it is a job and it has the same challenges as any other job, but it also has rewards, I think, that in a lot of ways, as you said, are very different than they might be in other careers. And so we get very passionate and dedicated people that come to work for us for those, you know, for those reasons. Kenneth, when we think about philanthropy, again, whether it's Alzheimer's New Jersey or other organizations, you, you, know, you mentioned obviously funding. And obviously you have donors that are very generous over the years that help, again, sustain this organization. It's been around for quite some time. 
And again, folks, check it out. Great website. Very, very user-friendly at www.alznj.org. Uh, make sure you follow them on, obviously, Instagram and Twitter, also on Facebook. But, you know, Kenneth, when we think about funding, I mean, fundraising certainly has to be, aside from just helping provide resources to families that are dealing with Alzheimer's, I mean, I would have to sort of hypothesize here that the fundraising component, reaching out to donors, especially in a tough economy like this, we've been living in a tough economy for quite some time, uh, even pre-COVID, it's not, you know, well, pre-COVID was probably a better economy than it is now, but we're seeing you know, the struggles for everyday working families. How do you think, obviously, that affects organizations that maybe aren't getting as many grants, let's say, at the federal level? You know, again, I'm not trying to sort of, it, may, it might be apples and oranges here, but you, 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 know, you look at other organizations like the American Cancer Society, you look at the March of Dimes, uh, certainly Alzheimer's New Jersey is a very visible and noteworthy organization, but I, I, I'm pretty sure it's a safe bet that there's a big disparity here in terms of the ability to get grants and to get any sort of funding, whether it be from Trenton or from Washington. Is that fair to say? Well, I, I, it does become more challenging. That's why you have to have a pretty diversified stream of fundraising revenue. Honestly, for us, we don't get government funding. We don't, you know, we don't get state grants. We don't get federal grants. We, I mean, we do have grants from, you know, from corporations and from private foundations. And then we have a direct mail program. Um, people donate to us when someone passes away or to honor someone. We have the, the events as well, as you mentioned. And our events are really designed to, you know, to, to be different for different segments of the population. So, you know, we have events that anybody can, um, you know, can uh, contribute to and get involved in like our walks. And then we have some events that, you know, where the price point is a little higher, like our gala on April 11th, but they're all designed so that somewhere in all of those things that we do, there's a place that for everyone to make a contribution. And that's really what it's about, you know, giving everyone the opportunity to do something. And those some things that they do, whether it's a $25 gift um, to support a walk or whether it's, you know, $225 to buy a ticket to a gala, people can do something for us at many different levels. And, you know, we ask people to do the best that they can and as you said, in this economy, the best that people can do may not be what it was a few years ago, but it still makes a difference and it's still important. No, it certainly is. Folks, again, it's 619 here on the East Coast. Do me a favor. Sharon is caring. Click that share button right now as the distinguished president and CEO of Alzheimer's New Jersey, Kenneth Saints, joins us here on Real Talk via Jersey First TV. Uh, Kenneth, you mentioned obviously some great events coming up, courtesy of Alzheimer's New Jersey. Let's delve into that. Big event coming up in April. The floor is yours, sir. So April 11th is our gala. Um, and that is, um, you know, that is taking place this year in the, at the Grove, in Cedar Grove. It's a beautiful facility. We So it'll be fun. It's, you know, it's not a sit down sort of traditional dinner. It's more of a networking event with heavy sure. hors d'oeuvres, um, open bar, which everybody likes. Um, but it's an opportunity to learn more about what we do as an organization. There's a 50-50, there's a silent auction, there's a live auction. So there's lots of different ways that people can contribute at levels that are comfortable for them. Um, and it's a fun evening. So it's, you know, there's entertainment. So being able to have a good time and to do it for, you know, a cause as important as ours is, I think is just what, you know, what people are looking for. So it's fun. Fun and fundraising is what I like to say. So, and then you mentioned our walks. I mean, our walks are really our sort of broadest community-based events. Um, we have one, our first, we have two in the spring. Um, the first one is on the 5th, May 5th, and that's in West Orange at the, um, um, at the, uh, the reservation in, uh, in West Orange, South Mountain Reservation. And then we have our walk in Jersey City at Liberty, beautiful Liberty State Park. Yeah. which is coming up um, on the 18th of May. And hopefully we'll be able to celebrate your post birthday at that event. If oh, you're... That, that, listen, that would be <laughs> great. I promise I won't be too hungover, but I certainly uh, look forward to, 
to uh, certainly celebrating that day and just, you know, contributing as well. But, you know, it's interesting you bring up fundraising. I mean, one of the biggest challenges, I mean, for an event, I mean, my event is small, though, Kenneth, compared to yours, right? And, I mean, I'm seeing the struggles of trying to get sponsorships, trying to get prizes for the raffle, just trying to, you know, ensure we get a 50-50, getting a venue, uh, certainly, you know, the promotion of it. I mean, have you seen the flyer I've created? You've seen my social wow. media engagement. I mean, that's that's work. And people are like, Fernando, why do you do this? I mean, you're not getting paid to do this. You're not getting anything out of it, you know. And I always – and my response to them, Kenneth, is – no, I am getting something out of it. I am doing something really worthwhile for organizations because I hear it all the time, whether it's the American Cancer Society, whether it's obviously the March of Dimes, whether it's other organizations I've volunteered for for over 15 years. I mean, philanthropy has been a big part of my adult life, going back to my years in grad school and then postgraduate and everything. I mean, I look at just, I mean, just the, not the chore, but man, it's exhausting. I mean, you have to make phone calls. I got to send out emails, follow up. Make sure that the venue is donating this, that this business is donating that. And I'm just like, I need a glass of wine. And it's like five in the <laughs> afternoon. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I can imagine if I'm almost going crazy, Kenneth, I can even imagine for the gala coming up next month, uh, how like how really how laborious that must be for you. Well, I, it's a lot of work, you know, and luckily yeah. we have wonderful volunteers, including, you know, including a great committee. And then our staff that really, you know, provides the background. So, I mean, it at the end of the night, I mean, it, yes, it's a lot of work. But as I said, you know, everybody has has jobs that in, in, in their job, there's a lot of work. But this at the end, uh, hopefully people are as rewarded in their work as as we are in ours. Um, so I, I guess that's the best way I can say it. And um, and the events are different. So the kind of the the skills and the pieces that are needed for a gala are a little different than you know what's needed for for a walk for example so there's a lot of variety and um you know even as a staff you know we sit back and take a lot of pride in what we help to create through our board members and and our volunteers i, I listen i have to say that when we look at uh, volunteers in any philanthropic form um, it, it's to be commended. I mean, we're talking about men and women, uh, even young children sometimes are volunteering their time, right, with their parents to, to go to these right. walks to help with these events. And I, I, again, I see it firsthand. I mean, I've been doing walks going back to like, you know, undergrad uh, at Rutgers in New Brunswick. And then when I started grad school at Rutgers in Newark, I mean, I remember doing, you know, walks all the time for different causes. And, and I can say this much, Ken, that, I mean, one thing I learned because father time is undefeated. You know, for a lot of years when I would host events such as, you know, the ones I would do for the American Kansas Society, for the March of Dimes, for others, I would always do it the night before the walk. And then I would just stay up all night and then go to Liberty State Park or go to wherever the walk was and just do that. And then I was shot for the rest of Sunday. I learned, man, father time's undefeated. I said, mm, if there's a walk on Sunday, I'm going to do my event on Friday. Let me decompress on Saturday after really because you know again leading up to your gala in April and my event also in April as well like the weeks leading up to it I mean it's like last minute things you want to make sure the venues organized correctly decorations right. balloons making sure the tables for the raffles are neat and tidy and organized and you know I'm so OCD about this stuff that I get there hours before my event and I make sure everything's decorated correctly everything is you know, the optics, aesthetically, everything looks very pleasing. I mean, I'm exhausted. So I said, you know what? No more of this where I'm doing the walk the <laughs> night. Before. I'm doing the event the night before. Let me sleep at least on Saturday. So, you know, again, I'm, I'm looking at this, whatever I can raise coming up for my event. I'm happy. Again, as I said, all proceeds, folks, from Friday night, April the 26th for Memories Matter 2024 will benefit the great organization, Alzheimer's New Jersey. And of course, their president uh, and CEO, Kenneth Zanes, is our guest tonight. Uh, Ken, you know, obviously we have the walk, we have the gala coming up, the walks coming up in May. What else can we look forward to for the rest of 2024 as it pertains to Alzheimer's New Jersey? Well, as far as events go, you know, and we, you know, we've talked about the two walks that we have in the spring, but we also have three walks in the fall. So there are five oh. altogether, two in the spring, three in the fall. Um, so and the fall gets really busy. The three fall walks happen to be um, three of our biggest. 
Um, and um, so it's, you know, it definitely doesn't end. It's, and the pre-planning, there's a, as you mentioned, there's a lot that has to happen at the last minute. That's just the way things go. But there's a lot of pre-planning that goes into place that, you know, that makes the last minute things not as impactful as maybe they otherwise would be if you, I mean, we're planning a year, all of our events, the planning starts the day after the event ends. And that's, you know, that's just how it, that's just how it works. Um, and, you know, we do have a lot of volunteers and I think we're lucky that, you know, we do have, especially here, you know, in, in the United States, we have a, a very strong tradition of volunteering. I mean, you had mentioned, you know, earlier in the show when you were, you know, you were talking about some of the political issues, but when you think about it, our entire system of representative government was based on the work of volunteers, you know, way back in colonial times when yeah. you know people volunteered for everything and that's how things work. And so the same thing happens today. I mean, people are busier, but they still, you know, it's harder, it's more challenging. Maybe you need two volunteers to do the work that one used to do, but you know, we still get people um, to do that in, and it's a great outlet, it's a great opportunity to meet other people and to really feel good about making a difference. And at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Well, Ken, I think it's fair to say that no one's working for free in Washington or Trenton, that's for sure. Uh, I think the founding fathers would be kind of horrified about what's going on today. But let's not get too political, you know. That's no, not, not at all. No, definitely not. Not at all. Uh, but, Ken, I really want to pick your brain here because let's mm -hmm. sort of examine some of the misconceptions that still exist about the way we view Alzheimer's and dementia. Sure. You know, I, I have parents. Uh, they're not elderly, I mean, but they're they're in their 70s and they're still very active. Um, you know, mentally, cognitively, they're, you know, they're still very sharp, uh, unlike some people in Washington, I won't mention names, but, <laughs> but um, I always really have emphasized for years, stay active, read, uh, make sure, again, because they're both retired, don't get stagnant. Again, don't just be watching Netflix all day or, or the internet or YouTube, make sure you're reading. You know, one of the things I'm extremely grateful for, Ken, is my dad, because from a very young age, my dad in, insisted in me, like from a young age, read, stop playing video games, read, read as much as possible. And my and my love for reading comes from my dad, where he made sure that I was reading a newspaper when I was very young. He made sure that, hey, if I had a book report, that I did it, that I read. And, you know, that skill has served me incredibly well. Again, going into undergrad, grad school, I still love reading. I mean, obviously, I couldn't read for fun and recreationally during during graduate school. But since then, I mean, as you can see there, obviously, behind me, I have a very healthy library with a lot of books from grad school, but books that I enjoy reading. And, I, you know, I always tell my parents, read, be active, keep the brain working. And again, you know, they're, you know, they're not showing any signs of cognitive decline, thank the Lord, and neither is the rest of my family. But I know that a lot of other people aren't as fortunate. And again, maybe I don't want to oversimplify where it's just like, oh, read, have a healthy diet, stay active. It just, you know, again, I'm not a medical doctor. You know, I'm a PhD, not a medical doctor. But what can you share with us tonight mm -hmm. about maybe things that we're still not looking at when it comes to Alzheimer's and dementia? Well, there's a lot of research, um, you know, just to jump right into, you know, what you were, what you were saying about reading, for example. There's a lot of research now showing that brain health is just as important as physical health. Yes. So healthy lifestyle, um, keeping active, keeping social, um, keeping your numbers low, like your cholesterol level and your blood sure. pressure numbers, um, exercise, diet. We know now, and we're learning more, that all of those, all of those things that we've always known were important for physical health we also know are important for brain health. And there's a lot of research now about, you know, can we, it, can we delay the onset of Alzheimer's disease? Can we quote, prevent Alzheimer's disease through healthy living? I don't think we're at that place yet. You know, we certainly know that, um, that those things are important, that they definitely uh, can hurt, that they're all beneficial. So leading a healthy lifestyle, whether it actually does prevent or delay Alzheimer's disease, and of course, science is still, you know, still not concluding that definitively, there's a lot of work that still needs to be done. It's still important. 
um, you know, for everyone, especially, you know, as we age. So, so I, you know, so that's really important again, just to, you know, just to, um, to expand what you were saying earlier. I think as far as misconceptions, there's a difference between what we might define as normal age-related forgetfulness and Alzheimer's disease. So as we age, and you know, you mentioned this, you can't, you know, you can't stay up partying the night before and then come out to, you know, and then come out to the event. Our no bodies, way, no you know, way. as we age, you know, we just don't work that way anymore. But that just means maybe that things slow down. You know, so for example, I may not remember someone's name as quickly as I once did, but I'm still going to remember it. Or I might forget momentarily where I put my keys, but eventually I remember where I left them. Um, so, you know, slowing down physically and slowing down cognitively are definitely signs of normal aging. What's not normal and, and sort of um, jumps into what might be a a form of dementia like Alzheimer's disease would be, I found my keys, but I don't know what they're for. Or I found my keys in the refrigerator or in the microwave. And still when I found them, I'm not really sure what they're for. So there's a big difference between, I can't find my keys and now I found them to finding them and not knowing what they're for. So, so normal age related forgetfulness is quote normal, um, and that's much different than the cognitive difficulties that come with Alzheimer's disease, which, you know, memory loss is one of the first signs, but it's not the only sign. You know, sometimes people think, oh, Alzheimer's disease, it's just about memory loss. And I actually had, I've had, I've had in the past someone say, well, how can Alzheimer's disease be the seventh leading cause of death in the United States? How do you die from memory loss? Well, because the brain is physically deteriorating. And so yeah. it starts with memory loss. Yeah. It ends with the inability to perform any kind of bodily function because of the changes that are happening in the brain. So, you know, I always say if, if we saw someone who had a, you know, who had a, a, a physical disability, that's very apparent. And you know we would adjust our expectations accordingly. But when you see someone who seems like they're perfectly fine, so, but they, but Alzheimer's disease is invisible. So sometimes our expectations, and it's even true for families, and and this becomes really hard. But the expectations that families have for what the person with the disease can do, is because they. They don't always think, and this is something that we we really try to teach in all of our education programs. Here's what's happening in the brain, and if you can understand that it's what's happening in the brain that's causing these changes, I think it may not be easier to manage, but it's easier to understand, and you can adjust your expectations accordingly. The other, I think, misconception is people get confused between dementia and Alzheimer's disease. Is it dementia or is it Alzheimer's disease? Well, the answer is it's both because Alzheimer's disease is a form of dementia. It's the most common form, but there are other kinds of dementia. So for example, vascular dementia is the second most common form of dementia. And then there's frontal temporal dementia, um, you know, there's other kinds of dementias that have that present differently that may not start with memory, you know, with memory loss. So it's so Alzheimer's. Think about dementia as an umbrella and Alzheimer's disease is one, um, you know, one kind of dementia under that broad umbrella of dementia. One kind. Right. So if that makes if that makes sense and sort of helps to put that in perspective, I think that's really important for people to understand. That's a great breakdown, Kenneth. I mean, again, I'm really impressed with really the detail. And again, I, I really applaud how knowledgeable certainly you've become in the field in your capacity. Again, folks, my guest this evening right now, it's 635 here on the East Coast. He is the president and CEO of Alzheimer's New Jersey, Mr. Kenneth Zaints, joining us here on Real Talk. Kenneth, it's funny, you know, my, my brain is kind of weird. Um, I, I forget people's names real quick, but I can list you 
every main event for the last 39 WrestleManias. Okay, I can list every <laughs> World Series winner going wow. back to 1975, but I'm bad with names, bro. Like I'll go to I I go to a lot of networking parties, a lot of mixers with you know it's 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 election season with election season every year basically. So in my capacity as a broadcast journalist, I mean I'm going to mixers literally once a week, sure. uh, twice a week, and I'll run into people, and I kind of have that Jerry Seinfeld, you know, if for anyone that watched Seinfeld, it's yeah. like hey you. <laughs> well, the one that I've become really, really like egregious with is, hey, brother, like, and people be like, Fernando Uribe, how are you? And I'm like, hey, you, how are you? And then obviously I feel <laughs> terrible when I'm in a room, wow. you know, and, and I'll bring a date with me. And of course, you know, I have to try to like, you know, camouflage a little bit. Hey, baby, uh, I'll just give my, you know, the girl, whoever I'm dating her name. I'm like, oh, you know, so and so this. And then of course, the person just feels compelled to give their name. And they'll be like, oh, great. Now I know the name at the moment. So it's kind of weird. Yeah, that weird. is. But I think, but that's probably because you meet so many people. Um, and um, we won't comment on the dating, of course. But, you know, you meet so many people. And sometimes it's hard to keep it all straight. But I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'd be accurate in saying that you never forgot your mom's name. Or if you, you know, whatever family you have, you don't forget their name. No. Or you don't forget who they are and what the relationship is so that's again the difference between you know the kind of forgetfulness that you're sure. describing and someone who has dementia sure uh kenneth are we seeing any data that perhaps it's starting to hit americans a lot sooner than 65 i mean are we seeing any testing or any data that might say hey maybe it's hit people as early as 60 maybe a little bit less and younger. Are we seeing any, are we seeing any well, developments yet that should alarm us? Well, there, there are definitely people who get the disease younger than 65. Wow. You know, we call that young onset Alzheimer's. Um, we don't know, we don't know exactly why that is, except for people who get the disease younger and it runs in families. In, and that's in that case, um, it's pretty well established that that's genetic. You know, we know that genetics alone doesn't cause Alzheimer's disease because there are people who, you know, who have genetic markers, um, genetic risk factors for the disease, and they don't get it. But people who get the disease younger and it runs through generations in their family, that's pretty much accepted as as genetic and and the rest is really still being un, you know being understood. Kenneth, let me ask you this. I mean, I, it might be a silly question, but I mean, it's something that we've always grown up believing, right? And we keep hearing at a very young age, don't do drugs, stay away from drug use. And obviously, um, I think it's fair to say any recreational narcotics certainly are not good for the brain. Um, you know, as someone that you know. As an advocate, I would say probably, again, during my years working in the criminal justice system and obviously as an academic, I've always been someone like, hey, you know, incarcerating people for marijuana usage um, is antiquated. But I'm always of the belief that I'm like, hey, I mean, ingesting, taking any sort of recreational drugs like that. And I get, you know, marijuana has been sort of been normalized for some years now. It's even been glorified to some extent. I always tell people, I'm like, hey, bro, anything that kills your brain cells, like, chill out with that because sooner or later that bill comes due, <laughs> and uh, the body doesn't forgive you. And I'm always of the, I'm always of the belief of like, listen, I don't want to sound, you know, like a boomer because I get accused of being that a lot, especially with, with, with my, you know, my political beliefs. But the point is, I'm like, hey, listen, the less and less you're killing your brain cells, and the healthier brain you can have. Uh, I think that's a good thing. Uh, any data out there telling us about, again, any sort of drug abuse? Could it exacerbate or accelerate the condition if, if there's markers for it? What's the data telling us, if anything? So, you know, I'm not a researcher or a scientist. I'm not familiar with any data um, like that. Um, but, you know, as I said earlier, we, we just know that keeping your brain healthy is important. Um, you know, keeping your brain healthy is as important as keeping your, you know, your body healthy. Yes. So, yes. you know, however people want to interpret that, you know, I'll, I'll leave it there. 
Well, again, fair enough. I mean, I'm someone that always, you know, whether it's been my students over the years or friends, I'm like, listen, the less we're killing our brains, the better. All right. And uh, I think that's always a good thing. Before I let you go, though, Kenneth, um, listen, I have learned so much with you today here. It's been such an illuminating and educational uh, episode here. Uh, I'm sure everybody at home is like, oh, my God, for I was not talking politics. He must be having a panic attack. No, no. I, you know, I love having yeah. guests like you on. I, I love learning about topics and and really about causes that I believe in and causes that I advocate for. And certainly I'm proud to be doing that uh, with you guys, again, with Alzheimer's New Jersey. Uh, real quick here. Uh, so, again, obviously, folks, check out their website, www.alznj.org. You'll see a great menu there. Very user-friendly website, ladies and gentlemen, about resources, certainly events coming up, how you can get involved. Again, for a lot of my students and people that I know over the summer that they're looking to intern somewhere or volunteer their time, folks, I can't think of a better organization to volunteer your time with than with Alzheimer's New Jersey. So if you're looking to do something fulfilling this summer and something that you want to encourage your kids to do and get involved and really get acclimated to philanthropy early on, folks, donate your time and if any resources monetarily to Alzheimer's New Jersey. They're a wonderful organization. I'm privileged to be working with them this year and, and, for, and for the years to come. Obviously, I want to keep hosting events for Alzheimer's New Jersey. So Folks, get involved with them. Once again, www.alznj.org. Make sure you like them on Facebook. Of course, follow them on Instagram and Twitter. Sharing is caring, folks. Raise awareness about Alzheimer's disease and certainly dementia. And that's what they do best there at Alzheimer's New Jersey. Kenneth, I'll give you the last word tonight. Well, I think I think what I'd like to leave people with is knowing that you know, that they don't have, this can be a really isolating disease. It's, you know, it's certainly isolating for the person who has it, and it can be extremely isolating for family caregivers. People don't need to face this disease alone. There is no cure today. We are certainly have made a lot of progress on the research side. There's still a long way to go, but there are, there are services there is an opportunity for, you know, for help and support, even if it's just joining one of our support groups, we can be so beneficial. And I, I think, you know, we talked earlier, um, you know, you had, about the, the um, incidence of Alzheimer's disease in the Hispanic Latino community. I, I think that because of the, the, the family dynamics, and I think the real dedication to family, sometimes there's this feeling that, well, we have to do it on our own and not ask for help. So please ask for help. This is not easy. So look, you know, look on our website, um, call us on our, you know, our 800 number. You know, we, there's a lot of help and support that we can offer. So families do not have to deal with this disease on their own. Uh, once again, folks, I can't say it enough here. Check out their website, www.alznj.org. Uh, you can contact them at 973-586-4300. Uh, their email is info at alznj.org. And funny story real quick, though, Ken, before I let you go, it's, it's interesting because as I was planning my event coming up next month with uh, with my associate, as we're doing this together, um, he had said to me, hey, you know, Previous years, we had, you know, donated our, our proceeds from the event to a different organization. Uh, Fernando, you know, hey, you're the professor, you know, you're the researcher, you know, where should we go next? And I, I mean, I made a point, I remember late last year, I, I would say around Thanksgiving, I started doing research and said, all right, let me look at these organizations. And again, I just, you know what it was, man, I looked at all the great work that you're doing. Again, the executive board there, the volunteers, everyone at Alzheimer's New Jersey, and it was one of those things where I was just like, you know what? Let me shoot an email out. I'm very proactive. Let me just shoot an email. Say, hey, I'm looking to, um, you know, host an event. Uh, I'd like to get your blessing, obviously. I'd like to, you know, incorporate the Alzheimer's New Jersey logo into the event. I want to promote for you. And it was one of those things where it was just like, um, you know what? Let me. I didn't get. I, I didn't get a response right away. I know you're all very busy. I'm very impatient. So I, I left a voicemail. <laughs> and sure enough, you know, again, shout out to my girl out there, Elaine Winter, who's probably watching right now. She's probably like, Fernando, why are you embarrassing me? But um, she was so nice. 
which reached out to me on a Friday. I'll never forget on a Friday afternoon. I was just about to take a nap and I see a, a you know phone number there. And I'm like, oh, I always answer my phone. And I, I had a wonderful conversation with her and then sort of a back and forth about talking to you. Okay, well, let's see what this sounds like. And like anything else, I'm sure you have people that say they want to get involved and they talk a good game, but they don't put put in the work. And that's not me. I put wow. the work in. And I, I'm sure, you know, obviously when you talked with Elaine and I got a chance to meet her, I mean, folks, again, when you're interested in, in philanthropy and volunteering, be persistent, reach out to organizations that matter to you personally, like they do to me. And I made a point, like, I'm not giving up here. I'm going to get someone to talk to me. And sure enough, Elaine was great to, to reach out to me, as have you. And again, I can't say enough how privileged I am to be working with you guys and volunteering with you guys. Again, it's a real privilege for me, Kenneth. Well, thank you. I mean, we appreciate it. We appreciate this opportunity to, you know, to for that you're giving us to help raise awareness because that's so important. You know, again, it's not a disease. I mean, I know sometimes people are, um, you know, they're embarrassed. They don't want to talk about it. But here we are. And, you know, like you said, in the example that you just gave, you call us most of the time we're answering the phone live. If we're not and you get a voicemail, you know, you will get a call back. Um, you know, we're here to connect with people and have people connect to us and have people connect to each other. I mean, that's that's really what it's all about. I think that's what it means to be a local community based nonprofit organization to really be there when people, you know, be there for people when and where they need us. Very well said. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the distinguished president and CEO of Alzheimer's University. Once again, check out their website, www.alz nj.org he is kenneth zanes joining us here on the program kenneth i'm not sure if you're coming out to the event next month i mean i certainly want to check out the gala but i i'm hoping to see you and elaine at my event coming up on friday night april the 26th we'll be there until the wee hours brother i mean can i get you to come <laughs> out to uh new jersey here well that could happen i can't guarantee the wee hours though Okay. Well, fair enough. But, uh, and, uh, Kenneth, you know, God bless you, man. You're, you're doing great work. And, uh, I can't say enough how, how, how really, again, it's a privilege to to talk with you and, and to really be involved with Alzheimer's New Jersey, uh, keep up the great work and we will talk to you again. Well, I'll see you soon, obviously, but we'll talk yeah, to you also absolutely. here. We'll talk to you here on Jersey and we'll talk yeah. to you here on Jersey first TV. You have a great night. You too. And thank you again. And, you know, we really appreciate, you know, the, the awareness raising through your program, but also, you know, your support through, you know, through your event and coming out to support ours as well. So this has been great. Kenneth, I'm a big fan of you and it's nice to know you're a fan of me, brother. I love you. Keep up the great work and we'll talk to you again soon on Jersey First TV. Sounds good. Have a good night. You too. Folks, good stuff there tonight uh, with Kenneth Zanes, again, the president and CEO of Alzheimer's, New Jersey. Hey, folks, I can't say enough again. Get involved with them. www.alznj.org. Uh, certainly, again, make sure you like them on Facebook. Follow them on Instagram and Twitter. Big events coming up. They have their gala coming up in April. Certainly, they'll have two walks in May. And as Kenneth mentioned, certainly later on this fall. So, folks, get involved. Okay? Alzheimer's and dementia is ravaging our country uh, state to state, coast to coast. And if we can do something, obviously, here in New Jersey to help families, family members, friends, colleagues, uh, classmates, you name it. Let's do our part. And uh, again, together, let's we can do our part to help defeat Alzheimer's and dementia once and for all. So uh, I can't say enough about uh, really the great work that they're doing. And uh, again, folks, in the weeks leading up to my event coming up in on Friday night, April the 26th, I'll be sharing the flyer more. Obviously, for those of you that follow me on Instagram and Twitter and on Facebook, you're seeing my promotions for the event itself. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you all for Memories Matter on Friday night, April the 26th at the world famous Lolita's Mexican Cantina, which is located at 8900 River Road, right in North Bergen, New Jersey. Folks, right in that Edgewater, North Bergen uh, border, obviously right along the water, easy to get to, Valley parking's available, Uber and Lyft accessible. Certainly folks, uh, hey, listen, it's late April. Weather will be great, hopefully. Weather permitting, make sure you all come out Friday night, April the 26th. And of course, also make sure you come out to the upcoming gala hosted by Alzheimer's New Jersey. Folks, you want to, folks, don't go anywhere. 
Remember, it's time for final thoughts. And folks, you know, over the weekend, again, I, I say it all the time. And, and what really bothers me about a lot of journalists and, and elected officials in New Jersey uh, is, you know, really just how reprehensible they can be, how sanctimonious they can be, uh, how sort of, you know, selectively moral they can be, or the selective moral outrage that they sit, that they tend to sort of demonstrate on a regular basis. And one guy in particular that really kind of annoys me, as I know he annoys many other people in New Jersey, and he's one of the more insufferable uh, clowns in New Jersey media, folks. And, you know, you know who he is. He's Matt Freeman. Yes, I know he looks like he's living under a bridge. And uh, whether it's uh, <laughs> this photo or appearing on television programs, I mean, folks, should we start a GoFundMe for Matt Freeman to maybe get him a comb or a machine from Phillips or, Lare or Norelco to trim that beard? Folks, this is embarrassing. Okay. But what's even more embarrassing, again, is the sort of the, the sanctimonious tone that this prick demonstrates on a regular basis on his social media. And two examples over the weekend that really caught my eye. One was sort of talking about a DWI for U.S. Senate candidate Alex Adan. If you all know Alex Adan, uh, he used to be the host of Power and Politics on News 12 New Jersey. Unfortunately, due to some budget restraints and, and cutbacks, uh, he was let go uh, last October from News 12 New Jersey. And subsequently, he decided to run as a Republican for the nomination for the United States Senate this year. We all know that the U.S. Senate race in New Jersey has generated a lot of hoopla, a lot of traffic, a lot of metrics, right? On both sides of the aisle, obviously, we know what's going on with the Democrat Party. But obviously, with the Republican Party in New Jersey, we have a lot of good candidates. And one of them is Alex Sedan. And we all know that once you start running for office, every little thing gets scrutinized. Every little thing uh, tends to get, uh, you know, put under a magnifying glass. And of course, you know, Matt Freeman, the perpetual pothead, uh, living in a cabin all day. And really, you know, let's be honest. I mean, is he, how much work is he really doing on a daily basis? Yes, folks. I mean, you can, <laughs> you can sit behind your MacBook and, and, and tweet and, and call sources, but you know, is Matt Freeman at, uh, in Trenton, uh, at the recent Oprah hearings? No, of course not. Uh, is Matt Freeman in Trenton at the federal building overseeing this monumental court case as it pertains to the party lines in New Jersey? No, of course not. You know, he's up in, you know, he's in a cabin upstate New York, being sanctimonious as always. But what's really inseparable about Matt Freeman, folks, and again, if you just watch his social media, again, I choose not to. I don't follow him. I choose, you know, I have no desire to. Certainly people will forward me stuff or screenshot me things and, you know, sort of like, it isn't, you know, it can't be a day that ends with a Y if it's not Matt Freeman being in sophomore, right? I know last weekend on his, uh, on, on the uh, New Jersey Playbook, obviously, he decided to highlight the DWI by Alex Sedan from 2020. Now, again, Alex Sedan very transparently talked about this right from the get-go. He was very sorry. Obviously, it did not uh, cause any bodily damage or vehicular damage to anybody. And certainly Matt Friedman, uh, you know, in his scrutinizing of candidates, of course, you know, uh, made a point to not only go after Alex Sedan and, of course, expose that, but also for Curtis Bashaw, the other Republican uh, U.S. Senate candidate. And I get it, folks. It's it's election season. Candidates deserve scrutiny. Well, it'd be great if Matt Friedman ever scrutinized Democrats that are running for Senate. Yeah, he's doing that now with Tammy Murphy and Andy Kim. But all these years... When you've had mummies like Bill Pascrell working in the House of Representatives, you know, any scrutiny from Matt Freeman on this cognitively declining mummy out in the House of Representatives, or Frank Pallone, another useless member of Congress, you know, Matt Freeman ever scrutinizing them or anything on their record or their past? Of course not, you know. But again, he, he's doing his work, he's doing his due diligence, you know, by exposing himself like this. Folks, is, is this really what's important during this election cycle? Okay. Alex had not apologized. He has shown contrition. It was four years ago. Uh, I'm sure if we look through the skeletons in the closet, we're not going to find something about Matt Freeman, right? A guy who loves to live on his high horse. Okay. 
a guy who's kind of openly competing with Jay Lasser as to who smokes more weed in New Jersey media or who or really who's more useless in New Jersey media. And that's a pretty, you know, that's kind of like neck and neck because we all know Jay Lasser is garbage. You know, and Matt Freeman, kind of, he's kind of getting up there with some of his trash takes that he does uh, on social media. But speaking of trash takes, here's one that really, really just caught my attention. And this is, again, folks, the level of, like, Here's a guy, folks, that is so limited, right? That it kind of makes you wonder how is a guy so limited like Matt Freeman have such endless esteem, self esteem? It's crazy to me. Like, doesn't he know he's an idiot? Doesn't he know that he's a clown and he's viewed as a clown by thousands and thousands of New Jerseyans? Folks, never mind. <laughs> we all know the answer to the question. Of course, he doesn't. And that's what makes him more, even more insufferable the level of clueless and really the lacking of awareness that Matt Freeman has. Okay, But again, one thing that really caught my eye well, over the weekend was Matt Freeman decided to write on Twitter, no reporter should ever have or use a PBA card. If you use your work connections to get up traffic tickets, you should not be a reporter. NJ 101.5 host Dennis Malloy, who wrote this, is, quote, a member of the media, but thankfully not a reporter. So, of course, you know, I'll sort of give you some context as to why this is so significant. Okay? So, of course... Uh, Dennis Malloy starts off by saying, if you ask a dozen people at a Jersey diner if anyone there has a PBA card, you'll probably hit about 50%, depending on the diner location. Every one of the driver's license in New Jersey knows what a PBA card and what it's used for. PBA stands for the, Pol the Police Benevolent Association, which is a police labor union. They give out cards as a perk of the job to family members, close friends, maybe politicians, and even members of the media. Right, he decided to write. Also, is it fair to use one? Well, is it fair if a woman shows a little cleavage or cries at a traffic stop? That's not working for me. So I say, whatever you got, use it. A good rule of thumb is to be honest and courteous to the officer pulling you over, and things will work out. And if that doesn't work, just pull out your PBA card. Now, folks, Dennis Malloy isn't wrong. Okay, I'm someone that likes to speed a little bit, not excessively. But again, in, in Matt Freeman's world, if you're driving in any residential area in New Jersey, chances are the speed limit at any of those intersections or roads, whether it's municipal roads, county roads, whatever, might be between 20 to 25 miles per hour. So if you decide to be driving 28 miles per hour, folks, here's the newsflash. A police officer that's in the vicinity can and perhaps will pull you over. And if they choose to issue you a summons because you're three miles over the speed limit, I hate to break it to you, folks. That's what they're there for. That's what cops are going to do. I'm not bashing cops by saying that, but that's what they have every legal authority to do. So, of course, if you're driving, again, folks, for those of us that leave our homes, unlike Matt Freeman, okay, who just stays in his cabin all day smoking weed, occasionally maybe walks his dog, right, or is caressing the only pussy in the house that, cares to even be near him, you know, or his cats, because God knows he isn't his wife. I mean, you know, his wife's at a bookstore all day, and right, and rightfully so. Who, who would want to come home and look at this insufferable prick like Matt Freeman? But, in Matt, but again, in Matt Freeman's limited brain, again, as he's killing brain cells hourly with the amount of weed he's ingesting, right? Oh, so if you're just driving 28, 29 miles per hour, okay, and a cop pulls you over and you have a PBA card, you shouldn't use it because, you know, you you know, that's the wrong thing to do. Who the F is Matt Freeman to lecture anybody about morals? Okay? A guy who's passed out drunk and high at a, at a hotel in Newark during budget season is going to lecture us about what's appropriate? Or a guy that spends all day smoking weed is going to lecture us about what's appropriate? Please. Folks, it is precisely this type of behavior. It's this type of sort of like narcissistic, delusional mindset that makes Matt Freeman as insufferable as he is. Folks, I use a PBA card all the time. I have former students who are cops who give me not just only regular PBA cards, but even gold cards. Okay? And I'm not the most egregious speeder, but if I'm speeding a little bit, you damn well, you damn right I'm going to. Bring out my PBA card. 
Okay, I haven't, I haven't had a speeding ticket in many, many years. Why? Because I choose to be smart. I'm not choosing to be morally, selectively moral or sanctimonious like Matt Freeman. Again, for a guy that never leaves his house, it's easy for him to talk about people that use PBA cards. But for but Maddie, for those of us that leave our homes and actually do real work and aren't just sitting at home again on these MacBooks, smoking weed, right? Like for those of us that actually venture outwards, yeah, you know what? Sometimes, whether it's in Hudson County, Morris County, all the way down in Burlington County, sometimes municipal police officers, even state troopers, even county cops might pull us over for even going three or four miles over the speed limit. You know what? Why risk a summons? Why risk your insurance going up? Why risk your, your premiums increasing? Why, why risk points on your license? Why? Because Matt Freeman is the end-all, be-all of morality? Kiss my ass, Matt. Because you know what? If you ever left your house, you would know that regular people are going to do whatever they, they need to do to make sure that they escape a summons. Again, with the amount of weed you're, you're consuming, it's no wonder your brain isn't really working at optimum level. But folks, again, when we think about clowns in New Jersey media, let's be honest. You could look at Matt Freeman. Obviously, you could look at his Twitter. Or in most instances, you could always remember, this is what Matt Freeman really looks like to the rest of us when he's being really as sanctimonious as he tends to be every single day. Speaking of clowns, folks, from one clown in journalism to one clown in politics. That's right, folks. Ravinder Bala, the mayor of Hoboken and U.S. representative candidate in the 8th Congressional District. Um, folks, I got to tell you, shout out to uh, Rob Menendez. <laughs> folks, you got to look at this website, corruptravi.com. Okay. Now, folks, you all know the level of dislike I have for Ravi Bala, right? The level of dislike I have for not just Ravi Bala, but the clowns, right? In, quite frankly, you know, the that serve on the city council in Hoboken, right? I mean, folks, this is this, <laughs> these are the people working with Ravi Bala, folks. These are the people working with Ravi Bala. Okay. And again, I can't say enough about, you know, how easy it is to go after the lollipop guild in Hoboken. You know, the usual clowns and, and wastes of life like Emily Jabor and, you know, Joe Quintero and, and, and Phil Cohen, right? The lollipop guild. But folks, I don't want to pick on them. Okay. They give me way too much return. But I want to pick on this clown right here. This is a guy running in the, in the Democrat primary coming up on June 8th against the incumbent U.S. Representative Robert Menendez. Now, I've gotten to know Rob for many, many years. Good guy. Good, decent guy. Family man. Know his father. In my mind, still, the, the senior United States Senator is still a good man, a, still a decent man to me. I got no problems with, with his father, Bob. I know some in the Democrat establishment do, and we're seeing that play, sort of play itself out in real time. But I'm not here to judge his dad. That's what Ravi Bala's been doing. That's what Ravi Bala's been living on, right? And for Ravi Bala to be, again, do you see a pattern here, a theme here tonight, folks? Again, when we talk about sanctimonious pricks like Matt Freeman, we have to look at sanctimonious clowns like Ravi Bala, who has the audacity to go after Rob's father. And again, folks, let's be, let's be clear about this, okay? Rob's father is entitled to due process. For those of you that ever took U.S. history or took constitutional law like I did, you remember something called uh, the Bill of Rights? You remember that? The Bill of Rights? Where you're entitled to the right to counsel, to the right to a jury trial, to the right to a reasonable bail, right? Everything that is involved with due process. His father's entitled to that just like the 45th president is entitled to it. Now, whether or not we're getting competent prosecutorial uh, behavior at the federal level, that remains to be seen, okay? Are there witch hunts that are out there? Of course. We're seeing it with the 45th president. And as the 45th president, 
noted, right, when it came to Bob Menendez and his associates that, let's be honest, uh, is there a witch hunt by the Justice Department against Bob Menendez? Folks, I think we can make a fair argument that there is. But I'm not here to talk about Rob's dad. I'm here to talk about Rob and Robbie. And that's the matchup coming up on Tuesday, June 8th in the primary. And isn't it rich for Ravi Bala to go after Rob Menendez's dad? Because again, in his eyes, you know, the sins of the father are cast upon the son. Folks, that's not what this race is about. Okay? What this race is about is someone as ethically and intellectually bankrupt as Ravi Bala is going to lecture you about corruption and about what's ethical? Folks, again, go to corruptravi.com. Okay? Go to corruptravi.com and I will read you, okay? I'm going to read you what corruptravi.com has to say about Ravinder Bala. Okay? And you're going to have a laugh at this. Okay. First of all, great job by Rob Menendez and his campaign team. Okay. Here are the facts. Here, here's four things that should really blow your mind. For anyone that still wants to defend Robbie Bala, here's some reality things. Folks, you can say what you want about Rob Menendez. Okay. You, you want to chastise him. You want to persecute him, crucify him because of his dad. That's your business. But that's not being intellectually honest. That's not being philosophically consistent, because that's what we are on this show. Okay, again, just like the 45th president's entitled to due process, so is Rob's dad. We'll see how it plays out in court. That's why we go to court. Okay? But one thing we can't escape, right, is Robbie about to talk about somebody else when, let's be honest, again, according to reports here, the New Jersey Supreme Court Disciplinary Review Board said that Ravi Bala has engaged in conduct involving, quote, dishonesty, fraud, deceit, or misrepresentation. Let's go to another one. In June 2018, the respondent was censured by the Supreme Court of New Jersey upon the recommendation of the New Jersey Disciplinary Review Board, which concluded that the respondent had engaged in dishonest or deceitful conduct and had failed to safeguard funds. In 2019, Bala's New York attorney license was suspended for three months for mishandling employment retirement funds and failing to notify the New York bar of his disciplinary record in New Jersey. And last but not least, Bala is currently suspended from practicing law in New York. Okay. This is the guy who wants to lecture you about ethics. This is, <laughs> this is the guy that wants to lecture you about morality. Okay. This is the guy that wants to lecture you about right and wrong. When Ravi Bala decided to, again, because he's so progressive and he's so about pro-women, that he decided to take Annette Chaparro, the former assemblywoman, under the previous design of the legislative district and decided to boot her. Why? Because Annette wouldn't kiss your ass, Ravi? I wouldn't kiss your ass either. You corrupt clown. Okay. So what he decides to do, he decides to take one of his law, you know, law firm buddies and the count in the Hoboken City Council, Chief Counsel, John Allen, and kick out a Latina and put in a white man in that assembly seat. Folks, does that sound progressive to you? Does that sound being all pro-women to you? Of course not. This is why Robbie's a clown. He'll continue to be a clown because he'll he'd rather lecture you. Then look in the mirror. This is a guy who, again, cares more about pronouns than property taxes in Hoboken. This is a guy during Pride Month. And, folks, I, I dread Pride Month. It's my least favorite month of the year because for 30 days, I'm going to have to deal with the insufferable nonsense of the alphabet mob. Every LGBTQ plus minus A, B, C, one, two, three, member of that community. Okay, that's insufferable as, as they are. And of course, you're enabled by clowns like Ravi Bala. Okay, because again, he would rather, instead of addressing flooding and addressing the rat problem, not the rats in City Hall that work in City Hall, but the rats that are like running the streets and opening up garbage bags and being a public health hazard to seniors and children and residents alike. No, he would rather worry about painting the crosswalks in Hoboken 
for rainbow colors during Pride Month and then worry about real issues. Okay? Robbie Ball would rather worry about drag queen story time during Pride Month than worry about whether or not Hoboken residents can afford property taxes or all the overdevelopment going on in Hoboken or white people living on the waterfront or in downtown are still getting flooded when there's rain falling. But Ravi Bala wants to lecture you about ethics and morals? He wants to lecture you about right and wrong? Ravi Bala doesn't know right or wrong, just like Ravi Bala wouldn't know a razor blade to his face. Okay? That's the level of disconnect. That's the level of being absolutely clueless, delusional, and just lacking overall awareness. That is who Ravi Bala is. But this is a guy who, again, again, listen, folks, and I get it when you play the game at the local level. Is it anyone's surprise that the Hoboken Democrats endorsed Ravi Bala this past weekend? Of course not. Because if they're being intellectually honest, and again, good riddance to the outgoing chair, Rachel Hodes, Hose, whatever her name is, I don't care. Another insufferable, useless feminist in Hoboken politics. Honey, good riddance. Don't let the door hit you on, on, on your ass on the way out, okay? Now, unfortunately, folks, the problem is that once you see someone useless like Rachel exiting, someone just easily as useless will be walking right in, okay? Don't be fooled by her sanctimonious letter last night showing dislike for the democratic process and the Hudson County Democratic Organization. Folks, it's the same organization that kicked Annette Shapiro out. And who was responsible for that? Ravi Bala. So, Rachel, next time you want to be all pro women, shut the F up and look in the mirror. Because when you had a chance to speak up for a woman like Annette Chaparro, a Latina, right? You chose not to. Why? She wasn't white enough for you? Maybe. I don't know. So, the next time Rachel Hodes wants to talk to you about ethics and morals and being such a woman and being pro women, she's full of you know what to. Because when she had a chance to stand up to Ravi and defend a woman, she went like this. Twilling her thumbs. Okay. Figuring out at the local Starbucks where I have her next cappuccino or macchiato. Okay. These are the people endorsing Ravi Nirbala, folks. And this is a guy who I cannot wait for June 8th for Rob Menendez to kick the living crap out of robbing Durbala on the primary. Never mind the, the debate coming up, hosted by the New Jersey Globe and my good friend David Wasting, the editor-in-chief. Or the other debate coming up, hosted by my good friend, a member of the Pinnacle, fellow workers alumnus, and fellow broadcast journalist, John, John R. Hines, with, with the Hudson County View, in partnership with, with the Hudson Media Group. I can't wait for those debates. Rob is going to smack Ravi Bala around the way Mike Tyson is going to smack around Jake Paul at Cowboy Stadium in July. I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to sit there with my popcorn. I'm going to sit there with my tea. And I'm just going to laugh when I see Robinder crying like he always cries. But this is a guy, just like Matt Freeman, that's the audacity to lecture you about morals and ethics and be all sanctimonious. Folks, are there two more useless people in New Jersey politics and New Jersey media this week than Robbie Bala and Matt Freeman? I can't find them. And trust me, there's a lot to choose from here. But folks, when you think of Robbie Bala, yeah, you think of a clown too. Think about that next time when you're uh, going to a Robbie Bala fundraiser and you're giving money away. You're just giving money to a clown. That's how you want to waste your money. Hey, folks, you want to piss away money? Send it to me. I'll make better use of it than anyone supporting Robbie Bala and Hoboken coming up on June 8th during the Democrat primary. Folks, that's our show for this week. Once again, I want to thank the president and CEO of Alzheimer's New Jersey, Kenneth Zanes, for joining us here. And uh, folks, again, sharing his camera. Click that share button and share the replay whenever you can. Check us out on all our great social media platforms. Again, make sure you like us on Facebook. And of course, follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, whether you're listening on Spotify or SoundCloud, download Jersey first 
and take us with you anywhere at any time, folks. Great content always available via Jersey First TV. And I can't say enough, ladies and gentlemen, how proud I am to be on the dream team of Garcia Media. That's right, folks. It is Jersey First TV. Brand new episodes of the Nader Narrative premiere every Thursday, hosted by the amazing Elizabeth Nader. And brand new episodes of Bridging the Gap, hosted by the outstanding AJ Malillo and Stephen Rombolo, premiere every Thursday as well. And folks, every Monday night, you can check out brand new episodes of Real Talk right here at 6.05 or 7.05. Again, always remember to check your local listings. Always remember, ladies and gentlemen, if it's unbiased, unfiltered, and unafraid, it's always Real Talk right here with Jersey First TV. I am New Jersey's premier award-winning journalist, Top 50 Latino as Voyard. I'm the Latino Spirit Online Magazine for 2020, 2021, and 2022. And certainly, folks, I think your nomination's coming for 2023. I'm looking forward to that. And, uh, of course, thank you to the United States Latino Affairs Initiative for their support of me and this program as well. Now, always remember, ladies and gentlemen, I'll continue to be the weapon of mass disruption in Garden State Media because now more than ever, my level of honesty is necessary in this era of journalistic deception. That's right, folks. It's me, Fernando, your rebay. Enjoy the rest of your week. Enjoy the warm weather. Make sure you fill, fill out your brackets. Win some money during March Madness. Good luck to all the Jersey teams, all the teams in the tri-state area, especially St. Peter's University, folks, as the Peacocks, the champions of the MAC conference uh make their way back to the big dance shout out to them and good luck to the peacocks from st peter's university and all the jersey teams during march madness folks again enjoy the brackets please party responsibly again folks if you can be good be bad baby we'll see you next week here on real talk via jersey first tv and as always thanks for stopping by <laughs>